takes a knee, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats are going home to host the Grey Cup in 2021. A victory against their rivals in double blue here today at BMO Field. When you go back to December 5th of last year, that East Final, yes. how much of a motivating factor do you believe that is for the players and the coaching staff heading into this season? Much of the staff has changed and we've added a few guys, some who were on the other side of the ball, right, to help us uh, to get to that next stage. Specifically, J. Garrett Davis and Speedy Banks are, are now on our sides. What happened in the past can provide a little bit of motivation and, and I think that's from guy to guy, from person to person. We do have a vision uh, of making it there. If they need that to get us there, ooh, you need to be really angry and, and, and have that drive you. But if all that drives you is being our best, I'm comfortable with that. That's where I go, sir. Where I go, sir. 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 I go. I think the rivalry in itself was already, you know, built up. It was already, you know, had the, the steam and the smoke and, you know, a lot of excitement behind it. And, and the fact that, you know, we played each other so many times in such a short span that, you know, it only increases the level of intensity. Um, you know, I just think it's one of those things that's kind of great for the game of football. You know, when you line up and you play Toronto, uh, I want Hamilton to, you know, respect 48. And so I think each time I step on the field, that's what is in my mind that, man, make those guys on that other side respect who you are as a player. Robberies like this, I think the fans play a big part. Whether they know it or not, the fans play a huge part in games like this where teams can, they already have that energy because it's somebody that you've seen so many times, you already you know, sick and tired of playing them, you know, sick and tired of seeing them, maybe sick and tired of getting beat by them. When the fans come in and you add that to the, to the package, it brings everybody's game to another level. And I just think it's great for the sport. Just find one thing and get better, man. Let's go. Yeah. Out here, might as well get better, man. Get better on me. One, two, three. Yeah. Perfect symbol for a heated rivalry in the case of the Hamilton Tiger Cats and Toronto Argonauts. This will be the first of four meetings over the course of the next month. Tie game with 12 and a half minutes left. It's doubly important the Argos put a drive together because they've got a bad long snapper. Oh, it's blocked! It's blocked! The Argos came up the middle and got it! It's a loose ball! It's on the 25-yard line! It is picked up and going to the house! Is Benoit Marion! From the 30. Back to pass Evans. There it is. He's gone. Off and going to the house is Chris Edwards. And round one in this four round fight goes to the Toronto Argonauts. The second half, we can come back and win that football game. So I'm just proud of those guys, man. They they, they found a way to stick together, and that's, that's the main point. And uh, defense, you know, carried us and uh, made some big plays for us down the stretch. Yeah. In Hamilton, as we get set for round two of four between the Argos and Tie Cats, six days after Toronto came back in the second half at home at BMO Field to win that one 34 to 20. Well, we talked a lot about Brandon Banks last week, Matt, facing his old team for the first time. The emotions continue back in his old building. Second down and 10. Deep look. Schiltz.
was the first carry for Sean Thomas Erlington in this game. And it's 34-24. At one point, it was 24-17 Argo. 17 on answer. Round two goes to the black and gold of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. It's a physical game. It's a physical rivalry. Uh, I think we got the better end of it last week. Maybe we took the more brunt of it this week. So um, it's always going to be a fight, and that's what makes it so good. We feel like we a couple missed opportunities. We take that away. But uh, hats off to them, right? They won the day. We just got to flat out be better. And, uh, you know, we got these guys in two weeks, so got to learn from it and move on. With a pair of close losses for both the Ticats and Argos in the rearview mirror and Labor Day lingering straight ahead, it's the start of another QEW home at home. Looking to the end zone over the top. Devaris Daniels. His third touchdown of the season. A quick recognition. And Second and about seven. Back to pass Bethel Thompson. Has a man on the crossing route, Ambles, touchdown! Marquise Ambles to the house! And the Argos extend the lead. And he'll go to the third receiver, Big! picked up! Six! It could be to the 50, to the 40. See ya! Touchdown! Third pick of the night for Peters! The hat trick to the house! Three picks. For Jamal Peters, number three. Argos, 37. Ticats, 20. See you on Labor Day in the Hammer. That was a hell of a team win, guys. All right? And let's, let's build off of this. Yep. Let's build off of it. Well, guess what? We know it's hard work to win, right? We got all the hard work in this week. And we had our best performance all year. It's going to take the same thing next time. And we're right. running into a hornet's nest. Hey, wouldn't you rather beat them in their backyard? Yeah. 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 Let's go. Let's go beat them in their backyard. Yeah. All right. It's going to take some time. All right, let's go get it done. Yeah. 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 Yeah.